From the mid-1940s to the mid-1950s, the face of the Harlem Globetrotters was a man from El Dorado, Arkansas, Reese Tatum. His distinctive walk earned him the nickname Goose, but he was known also as basketball royalty, the original clown prince of basketball. To generations who grew up in the television era, he might be described as the Metal Lark Lemon before there was a Metal Lark Lemon. But basketball wasn't Goose Tatum's first love. First time I ever saw Goose Tatum was playing baseball with the Indianapolis Clowns in Indianapolis, Indiana, at a place called Victory Field. My father took me out there and saw this guy on first baseball. He was so animated and just seemed like so full of life. I was 17 when I first saw him. And I, I just couldn't take my eyes off of him, catching the ball and throwing and talking and catching the ball behind him. It was just amazing to just sit and watch him. He'd catch a ball and look around like he missed it, you know, and do all these kind of things. You know, hey, for a young kid, you know, and that was exciting and funny to me. He knew how to make people laugh, watch him, see how he caught the ball and see how he threw the ball and see how he played and his humor he had as he played. And later on, I began to see a player named Vic Power from Puerto Rico that played first base. And he did a lot of things that Goose Tatum did, catching the ball here and there. And, and a lot of people in the major league didn't like that, figured that he was a clown. But he got the idea from Goose Tatum. Many of know so. Willie Mays basket catch and Lou Brock and, you know, they just put more interest into the game. I think that's what Goose did, put more life into it, more color into it, more fun into it. So they learned a lot from him. When Goose landed with the Negro League's Birmingham Black Barons in 1941, the manager took notice of the charismatic young player and tipped off Abe Saperstein, part owner of several Negro League teams and owner of the Harlem Globetrotters. Saperstein was a self-made man, a Jewish immigrant who based the Globetrotters in Chicago. Saperstein said his team was from Harlem, the epicenter of black America, for promotional purpose, even though he drew his players from all over the country. Always thinking of the biggest show, Saperstein believed Goose could be his brightest star. Goose accepted Saperstein's invitation, and a year later, the groundbreaking partnership began to flourish. It was really a marriage of two geniuses in their own field. Abe Saperstein was a marketing genius. He recognized the kind of talent that Goose had. And they created this synergy that really changed the world in terms of sports and entertainment. Saperstein promoted his new protege, the Clown Prince of Basketball. Yet Goose flipped the backhanded label, building bridges and breaking barriers along the way. When Goose joined the Globetrotters in late 1941, the NBA didn't exist. The Trotters routinely beat all-white pro teams and college all-star squads in competitive games. When Goose and the Trotters would build up a lead, they would follow a different playbook. They could not have gone out and played straight basketball and would never have achieved the, the, the heights of the popularity that they achieved. They didn't do it that way. They had to be considered clowns. These were guys who could really play basketball and they had to resort to play this entertaining style in order to get on a stage. He gets the basket, and it also appears that he wants to get his picture taken. He wasn't menstrual. He wasn't a clown. He had the skill set to make a person laugh. He had the ability to get their attention, and therefore the ability to change your behavior. Somehow, intuitively, Goose understood that. 